What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet video. We are talking about the official Series 1 rule set. It's kind of crazy because we have a first. Uh, if you don't know, in VGC 2017 and in VGC 2020, the only things banned, and keep in mind these are the first games of their gen, they were original decks, the only things that were banned were actually the box legendary Pokemon. So in 2017, you're able to use the Ultra Beasts as well as the Tapus. There was no ban there. And then in 2020, there was no sub legendary, so it was just the box legendary ban. Well, the difference nowadays is we are now using a series format, which means that Game Freak wants to find a way to split up the formats uh, in, in, in a way to give them their own identity. So what they've decided to do is ban the Paradox forms and the Ruination Quartet until further series. But before we get into that, do me a favor, if you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. And surprise, we have a guest. Brady, you wanna say What's hi? Up? It's me, I'm back again. Whoa, that's crazy. Yeah, so hi. Brady, Mercury, long time friend of the channel. He's been on the channel a ton of times. Uh, also a VGC YouTuber. Uh, you know, Joe UX9 wasn't available to record today, so you know, I had to get Brady. Yeah, uh, but... <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I'm, I'm the replacement. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, uh, Aaron, Aaron Cybertron Zang wasn't available. I had to lend him my, my Lamborghini to go to his wedding. I'm such a good friend. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so we're, we're here with Brady, and what we're going to talk about is the also spoilers. Let's just get rid of that. Um, what we're going to talk about <laughs> is the effect that these bans will have on competitive Pokemon for the first series, um, how they came out of the blue, and what we expect to be good in the upcoming format. Because we've all been playing what we expected to be the format, given all the precedent that we've had in previous regional DEXs, but we were wrong, which is insane. Uh, so no one knows what's good, but certainly things that were good are now gone. So, you know, do you want to just... Let's just start with the obvious, you know, let's just go through the bad uh, like, Yeah, it's like, well, it's, you know, Fluttermane's gone, Chiyu's gone, yeah, the, the, Chien Pao's gone. The big ones uh, are going to be Fluttermane, Chiyu, Chien Pao, Iron Hands, uh, Iron Bundle to a lesser extent, I would say. Yeah. And so, Brute Bonnet a little bit less, right? So, right off the bat, whatever stocks of it are down, what a, what a, well, what stocks are up? Robert? What stocks are um, up? What stocks are up? Let me tell you what stocks are up. Okay, so it's down. Um, it's down. <laughs> yeah, no. Unironically, down. Dozo stocks are up, but I'll explain why in a second. Here are Pokemon whose stocks are up. Dragapult. And these guys, all their stocks are up specifically because Fluttermane, the best Pokemon in the format, is now banned. Now, keep in mind that uh, Fluttermane basically had a built-in choice scarf with Protosynthesis if you use Booster Energy, so you're able to switch your moves up. This meant or that if it with, was on a Sun Team, yeah. Yeah, or if it was on the Sun Team. Uh, this meant that 135, 135 Timid would outspeed and one-shot things like Dragapult, Garchomp. Gengar wasn't a thing before this, but I'll explain why he's probably going to be a thing. But yeah, these two guys, their stocks are now way up because not only is their main check gone, but Dragapult's main competition is gone. There weren't very uh, there weren't very many other uh, good ghost types in the format. Uh, but also, you know, Fluttermane was a fairy type, so, you know, I mean, like, it was mainly used as a fairy type, but that ghost typing was huge, so, like, you would almost never run Dragapult with it. Yeah, it's like, oh, it, so, ghost type stocks and dragon type stocks are, like, way up, just because, for the most part, this, uh, this dex doesn't have, like, good fairy types or ghost types. Yeah, uh, on, let's look at fairy types. And Fluttermane like... filled, like, both of those roles like you have god of War and you, you're pretty much forced to run scarf on that guy um and i guess you have sylveon um but like everything fast. else it was it was the speed that like made it good so like scarf god of war is like the only comparable thing yeah for the most part it's like the, uh, the other fairy types really did different stuff Fluttermane was like the only good like offensive ghost and fairy type at the same time like it just covered both roles really well because normally that would be like a Gengar, I mean Dragapult as well. Uh, in previous formats, it was like a Mega Gengar as well. Uh, Gengar liked being used like that way, but they got yeah. rid of Levitate. I mean, like, um, I, I think that Gengar stocks definitely go up because the way that people were using Fluttermane was usually like with Icy Wind on it because it was like Regieleki T or Speed Control. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, now Gengar. Here's the thing, right? Um, if we look at the speed tiers of Pokemon, 
Fluttermane was like at the upper echelon of speed. Because if we look at it, it's Electrode, which doesn't get used. Dragapult, which gets used now. Ferrascuta, which doesn't get used. Uh, Iron Bundle banned. Chen Pao banned. Fluttermane banned. Jolteon unused. Talonflame kind of gets used. Kilowattrol is to be explored. Weavile doesn't get used. Meowskarata might get used. Noivern doesn't get used. Cyclozar doesn't get used. Everything from here up until we hit like maybe Mousehold and Gengar. You keep yeah. in mind that like anything like between Gengar and Dragapult isn't going to be common enough to prep for for the most part. So Gengar yeah, all of a sudden becomes like the second fastest Pokemon at 110. That's, so, that's the crazy part. Um, which means also running Scarf on things as well is just more of a viable strat in general. Yeah. Um, because I think the issue was you couldn't just slap on a Scarf to outspeed the Flutter main. Um, you saw a lot of people running like priority moves with like, ex like a, I mean, extreme speed wouldn't hit it, but, um, like Circle Punch on Chien Pao or like Bullet Punch on Scizor, you'd see a lot of that yeah. just because oh my God. I hate you were that never... Bullet Punch Scizor stocks are down. Unless you specifically set up like a Tailwind with a Merkur or a Talonflame, there was no way that you were outspeeding a Flutter main yeah. with anything other than another Flutter main or, um, Booster Energy like, uh, uh, iron bundle or something so running a scarf on anything so something that i've been want looking into is disquake or just general like spread move spam um telepathy god of war was something that i've been looking into a lot mm -hmm. and i realized that it just became redundant to use because uh or the thing that it's supposed to be outspeeding it can't outspeed because it gets a speed boost itself it's like yeah you know y you and know what's funny though you know what's funny you know how, like, we're, we're talking about, like, alright, yeah, fairies are kind of bad now, except for, like, Sylveon and Gardevoir, which leads to the rise of stuff like Garchomp, right? Yes. So, like, dragon types, um, I expect to see a lot of Garchomp, I see, I expect to see a lot of Garchomp plus Salamence, even. Yeah. Um, you know, clear out, uh, uh, amulet, uh, like, Terra Ground Garchomp, uh, I've been playing around with Terra Fire Garchomp, but I think that Terra Ground is better now just because there aren't as many fairy-type threats. Yeah. I think Garchomp, um, or here's, here's what I'm scared of, I think Garchomp and Covert Cloak Bulky Murkrow with Tailwind might actually be a thing. Yeah, that's, that's, like, one of the things that I've been trying to play with as well, like, ever since we got the news, which has been out for a couple hours now, but yeah. um, oh, that's wait, one of the things Let me I've interrupt you again out. real quick. By the way, guys, this rule set goes up earlier than other rule sets have. It's just well, later in the fact that it's, like, a day later, but, like, earlier time-wise. Uh, usually they'd go up at, uh, if you're in the West, 10 p.m. CST or just globally, you know, 4 a.m. Uh, 4 UTC or just 4 UTC, I guess. Uh, but now it's going up at midnight UTC, December 2nd. So if you're streaming, I, I mean, I just happen to be streaming at literally the time it goes up, so I'll be streaming it. Uh, but yeah, no, to keep that in mind, uh, basically tonight, when this video goes up three hours from now, that is when you can play this format. Hi. <laughs> Uh, we should, uh, do some, like, team building, or just, like, a best of three in general, that'd be kind of hype. Oh, yeah, and, like, for sure. I mean, I already, you've already seen my team, my team builds crazy. Except for that uh, yeah. one guy who was running <laughs> the wrong ability on Amoongus. Okay, but point is, yeah, Garchomp stocks go up, because Clear Amulet Swords Dance Garchomp is now not checked by something faster other than the Dragapult. Uh, and it can also have Tailwind support. But I think because of that, for one, Intimidate Pokemon go up, so, you know, Salamence goes up, Arcanine goes up. Gyarados for sure benefits from this a ton. And because, Absolutely. get ready, we're a third degree of separation away from the Pokemon getting banned now. Corviknight may actually have a niche for once. Because Meraam is okay. Um, I think that Corviknight, like, ah, I guess Chiyu was the main thing holding that thing back, but for the most part, I still think it had a small niche. I think now it's actually like somewhat viable as a bulky like tail instead of it can do iron defense body press stuff um and also just a general deterrent of intimidate um a lot of the intimidate guys um were not irrelevant but unneeded it felt like just because a lot of the time um because what we saw rise when people were running the format where they were allowed is that we we're seeing like uh, extreme speed, uh, normal, uh, Dragonite, um, with inner focus. So, uh, a lot of, uh, Intimidate Deterrent 
was was going around, but also it was kind of unnecessary because Qian Pao itself like lowered that and sort of part way just you know mitigated the intimidate drop. Also, one of the main threats of the thing was Chi Yu and Fludamin as special attackers. Yeah. <laughs> so the only thing that they couldn't really stop was maybe an Arcanine with like an AV or like just a really bulky Arcanine because they can Will O Wisp and Snarl and do all that stuff and Fluttermane is uh threatened by Arcanine because I can't really touch it if unless it's like uh Terra Ghost, which most of the time it was fairy or sometimes you saw fire. Um you generally couldn't touch it for much damage and you would just get hit with either a Flabless or a Snarl and you're not doing much. Yeah. I mean um, generally hyper offense is like <laughs> excuse me, is like almost gone. You yeah, know? I mean, uh, there's still forms of it, obviously, you know, we're still going to I mean, see like Garchomp plus Tailwind, but I mean, like, the no setup required hyper offense is basically gone. Yeah, um, and that's like, I can say that's probably better, all things considered. I feel like that serves for a healthier format. That said, uh, I really did like first four guys on the same team. These that was a lot fun. of fun. These that was fun. So, but I it like was how, a lot of fun. I like how a single bulky Arcanine can shut down both modes if you lead wrong. Yeah. Um, Which honestly, Arcanine but, stocks technically down, I guess, if we're considering that. Arcanine stocks down, but not because it isn't good, because other Intimidators become somewhat usable. Yeah. Um, Gyarados um, won a tournament the other day, I believe. Um, Gyarados is actually a lot of a lot of fun. It's like you run Clay Amulet with like Dragon Dance. And yeah, that's a really good ball, and it, I mean, it's like in an Intimidator itself, and you run it bulky, and it does it does Gyarados things. Yeah, um, I'm a big fan of Terra Grass specifically because it becomes like a safety goggles, and you still resist. Um ground or you still resist electric yeah um and generally speaking it's like garrett does garrett things it did that in 2017 it's always done garrett things but now you have the clay amulet so you don't get intimidated yeah uh, which is always a huge boost and terrestrialization to like lower your weaknesses is really good because garrett is actually an incredibly bulky pokemon despite it being super weak to uh electric uh that thing has an incredibly high uh special defense stat it's just fit it's held back by its typing yes um, so terrestrialize it let it do its thing um and you're you're doing amazing stuff now you have access to like taurus um salamence is available now and for the first time it feels like salamence is actually viable since like 2014 minus its mega evolution yeah um for 2017 because... like salamence plus metagross is a thing it was a thing, but it wasn't like, it felt like it wasn't being used. Um, it, it was being used as like a, oh, okay, you have, you're the one guy who has a fast bulldoze um, and you have a decent amount of coverage to slap an assault burst on you and uh, let you enable the metagross. For the first time in a long time, it feels like Salamence itself, like by itself is a genuine threat because it does get its physical like if you're going to run it physical you have dual wing beat and you don't have to terrestrialize into flying type but if you if you can turn into like a terra flying salamence you can run terra blast and that's good uh you can run draco media you can run tailwind uh you're an intimidator um the issue before is that salamence in 2017 had a lot of fairy competition to deal with because there was the toppers running around um whimsicott was everywhere because uh, of tailwind and stuff now you don't have to deal with that, Salamence becomes a little bit more free. It feels more like 2014, where a lot of the teams did include for, like, the God of War and stuff. Yeah. Uh, like, God of War was, like, the fairy type in that gen, if I remember correctly. Um, maybe, because there were no Megas in that format, right? 2014? Oh, 2014 had Megas, it was just it, the only good fairy type Mega, I think, was Mobile. Yeah. And I, I mean, um, Mega Gardevoir, and, I believe, existed. Yeah, Mega Gardevoir existed, but I, I think it was worse. I think yeah. it got run. I think it got run because of telepathy, maybe. Um, yeah. Trace also kind of good, but it's more niche. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, and Salamence, we were newer to the scene back then, so take everything we say with a, with a grain of salt. <laughs> yeah. Um. So Salamence had a little bit more competition. That doesn't exist anymore. So Salamence stocks way the hell up. Um. It also gets Tailwind, which is something that it didn't get before without the TM. Um. Which is like pretty good, and it's got like relatively great stats. It's good speed, good speed stat. It, yeah. You can run it mixed. One one final um, thing I want to <laughs> list 
so we can like round off this video because we, we could talk forever about this to be honest oh uh, yeah uh is probably the most important thing for one don does stocks up but also uh amoongus now that like we don't have chi yu uh actually like we have very few good fire pokemon i mean armoru or armoroge is probably gonna go up is it armoroge yeah armoroge probably goes yes. up but like Arcanine is our best fire type. Chi Yu and Arcanine were like tied before. But like yeah. now like we'll probably see more Rotom Heat. We'll probably see more uh, Volcarona. But because Gosh. like at the beginning of the format, people will be like, oh, I guess I'm just going to run Arcanine. Like there's less variety to deal with. You can prep specifically for Arcanine now. And like a moon yeah. just, it goes way up. Yeah, you can definitely be like more of a physical guy. Um, like physically defensive guy in that way. Um, the other fire types you might have to deal with is like Skeledurge or like, um, what was the guy I was thinking about before? I mean, you have Taurus, um, Armor Rogue is really good with the DD uh, Armor Rogue. It's the only thing it's expanding force. Yeah. Um, so that's an, another extended thing you got to deal with. What other fire types were there, there that I was too thinking many. about? Not too many good ones. Um, Volcarona. That that guy is still around. Rotom Heat. Um, yeah, it's about that's about it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Ah, uh, Torkoal, Torkoal. What am I? You gotta deal with Torkoal. Um, so. Oh yeah, but like Torkoal stocks are also down because it only gets run with Lilligant now. Yeah, so some teams no become more some teams. So some teams are actually some teams now. Uh, like the previous like idea of some team with Chlorophyll guy and doing whatever you need to do. You're not gonna run into a guy just running a random uh, Torkoal on your team. You're gonna, it's gonna be you like on a hard trick room team, or it's gonna be with a Lily again. Like, yeah, that's it's just be, how it's gonna I be. I think Lily Cole actually might actually be really good. Um, I, I personally, um, before even we knew of any of the new Pokemon, was building um, a Lily Cole team with Oracaria because Petal Dance and Quiver Dance and all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> One good thing about this format also is that Aura Courier, as much as it is just not the greatest mon in general, um, it gives me back the the ability to use it because I used it back in 2017 and uh, I get to do my fun memes. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, I, I mean, I guess we can probably wrap it up there. Also, notably, Garganical's scarier because we don't have good special breakers. But yeah, um, let's probably just wrap it up there. I, I, there's there's yeah. so much we could talk about, but I don't think it's worth going too far into without just experiencing it tomorrow at 6 p.m. at twitch.tv slash moxieboosted. Uh, but yeah, um, anything you want to say before we wrap up? Um, I, I mean, I'm pretty excited. I'm looking forward to doing content. I've been building for no paradox and no uh, ruin guys just because I knew this might happen. Like ever yeah. since we talked about it on the podcast, I was like, oh, OK, sick. Um, I should probably be building for this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And that said, um, we're smoking that Dombozo pack today. That Dombozo brothers. pack. We have Yo. fewer checks. <laughs> Listen, Dombozo goes hard in this format once again. All right, I'll see you guys later. Don Ducter out. Goodbye.